Hey, Daryl, just wanted to leave my testimony for you as a Gentile uh, believer in Yeshua, Hamashiach, that um, I came to the understanding that the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade and probably some indigenous um, African Americans here that were here beforehand, I think might might be some of the lost tribes of Israel who were here when uh, when Columbus got here, that uh, understanding that you guys are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible that people around the world uh, understand as uh, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My testimony is about three years ago in December, I was reading the book of Revelation. Uh, as, as you know, it's the only book in the Bible that promises a blessing to those who, who read it, and it turned out to be true for me. Um, I was in chapter 4 and uh, verse 3, and he that sat on the throne was to look like a jasper and sardine stone, and there was a rainbow around the throne in the sight like unto an emerald. When I saw jasper and sardine stone, uh, I looked those stones up, and uh, the color of them was basically like a, a, a black man's skin. And then I turned back thinking of what Revelation 13 and 14, 1, 13 and 14 say. His head and hair were like wool. Of course, we know what uh, African Americans' hair is like. It's like wool. White as snow, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet were like unto fine brass as if it had been burned in a furnace. And so obviously we know what color that is. So uh, that's when I realized that Jesus Christ was a black man. And, but I didn't put two and two together about uh, his descendants uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who the entire Old Testament and the New Testament, and uh, Jesus speaks about it in Luke 21, 24, together about uh, his descendants uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who the entire Old Testament and the New Testament, and uh, Jesus speaks about it in Luke 21, 24, that uh, there's going to be a time period where the Gentiles take over, and uh, at the end times, the Hebrew Israelites are going to wake up, they're going to come to themselves, they're going to remember who they are, and uh, they're going to start coming back to Yah and his commands, and when they do, that is when the second exodus takes place and Jesus' return happened. So uh, it, was a, it was a big... So, so I accepted that Jesus was black based on the Bible itself. And a little more about my, my story. I went to a fair, and uh, recently after discovering this, and, and there was some IUIC gentlemen there in the purple and gold, and I almost had an opportunity to go up to him and say, I, I believe Jesus is black too. I didn't get the chance to speak to them, but I got home and I just looked up on YouTube, you know, gold and purple opportunity to go up to him and say, I, I believe Jesus is black too. I didn't get the chance to speak to them, but I got home and I just looked up on YouTube, you know, gold and purple, uh, black uh, Hebrews and found somebody. I got his number. I called him and because I wanted to fellowship with a Hebrew Israelite. And uh, that was when I learned about the camp doctrine of white people can't be saved. Uh, it didn't deter me at all. In fact, uh, later on, listening. Shalom. I want to give all praises and in glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shem, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And um, pretty much, you know, through the spirit, the truth is being revealed before all hell breaks loose in the form of Jacob's trouble. The hour of temptation leading up to the destruction of Babylon the Great and the state of Israel by thermonuclear destruction according to the Bible. Because those are two events that's going to take place during World War III. And before 
the nuclear missiles hit its prime targets, you know, the designated land areas, the elect of the nation of Israel that you read about in Revelation, the seventh chapter, will be beamed up and receive salvation through Hamashiach Yahabashai, because Yahabashai is a true name, not Yahshua, through the so-called UFOs, all right? The tractor beams from the so-called UFOs is how the elect of the nation of Israel will escape this thermonuclear destruction that's going to take place during World War III, all right? So right now, we're living in the time of the Gentiles, which the last heathen nation to rule, all right, pursuant to Daniel, the second chapter, as well as second Ezra six and nine and plenty of other scriptures is the Edomites. All right. The Edomites is the so-called white man in his seed lot. Every individual on the planet Earth comes from the seed, which is the sperm of a man. But there's only one chosen nation that is the seed of the promise, which is who? The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native American Indians, according to the scriptures. We are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And every time you read about the Israelites in the Bible, that's our ancestors. That's our history. All right? So without further ado, I'm just going to let the scripture speak. This is Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. It says in this gospel, right? Now, let's go into the word gospel real quick. Now, the word for gospel, Strong's G 2098. Strong's G 2098, euangelion, euangelion. And it says a reward for good tidings, a.k.a. a reward for good news. For spreading the correct doctrine and gospel, that's the job of the Israelite men, the ones that have been sanctified through the Holy Spirit, all right, to push forth this gospel, right, the elect men, the prophets, it says good tidings, because we're going to get a reward when Yehoshua returns back, which is those new immortal bodies that you read about in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, as well as immortality and everything that comes with an everlasting rulership, all right, in the kingdom of heaven. It says the glad tidings or the good news of the kingdom of the Most High soon to be set up, and subsequently also of Yahabashai, the Messiah, the founder of this kingdom. After the death of Hamashiach, the term comprises also the preaching of concerning Yahabashai Mashiach as having suffered death on the cross to procure eternal salvation for the men in the kingdom of the Most High. What men? The Israelite men, first beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel, right? It says, but as restored to life and exalted to the right hand of the Most High in heaven. That's in Acts chapter 5, verse 31, which proves that his blood and sacrifice is strictly only for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect, which are the believers that have faith in him. Right. It says, thence to return in majesty. How is he returning in majesty? By the way of the so-called UFOs with power and great glory. All right, to bring salvation to the elect of the nation of Israel and ultimately to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth as prophesied. Right. It says um, to return in majesty to consummate the kingdom of the most high, the glad tidings of salvation through Hamashiach, the proclamation of the grace of the most high manifest and pledge in Hamashiach. So through the blood and sacrifice of Yahabashai, Yahabashah's blood covers our sins, which is grace and mercy from the Heavenly Father through his blood. To where the Most High, he won't lay the charge or the iniquities on our sins upon us as the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. All right. The elect of the nation of Israel is under a grace period pursuant to Ephesians, the first chapter, to where we won't be judged with the world, even though we're sinners called back to repentance. The Most High won't destroy us with the world. He'll have mercy on us, even though we're sinners. Why? Because ultimately, we've been predestinated before the world began to receive salvation. And ultimately, the Israelite men that have this truth, the correct doctrine, because not every Israelite camp is the same, but the camp you should be watching is Great Millstone, GMS. All right. You can subscribe to the channels that's in the description 
or my channel or any great millstone brother. All right. So we the doctrine that we teach through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai will make Israelites that truly have faith and believe wise unto salvation through faith in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. All right. So the doctrine and gospel that you learn is very important because that's going to determine whether or not, not only if you are a part of the elect, but ultimately if you're going to be made wise unto salvation and you learn those steps by learning from the men of Great Millstone. All right. So it says, um, yep, it says. The gospel as the messianic rank of Yahabashai was proved by his words, his deeds and his death. The narrative of the saints, deeds and death of Yahabashai Mashiach came to be called the gospel or glad tidings or good news. Right. That the Most High, he never forsaken his people, the Israelites. And through Yahabashai's blood and sacrifice, ultimately, all Israel eventually will be forgiven. All right, under the new covenant. But as far as salvation purposes are concerned, that strictly only applies to the elect of the nation of Israel. All right, because the Israelites that die on this side that don't receive salvation, aka the two thirds here in America, that's going to be a part of the lake of fire because they're not going to repent. They don't want to accept that they are Israelites and they just want to continue to live in error following the way of the heathen. They're going to be destroyed on the side, but ultimately in the kingdom of heaven, they will be born as the elect men's children. All right. So continuing on. So it says Matthew 24, 14, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. That's why you have a great awakening going on pursuant to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. You have Hebrew Israelite camps all over the world, all through the four corners of the earth. Why? Because this gospel has to be preached. The good news that the Heavenly Father, through Yahabashah's blood and sacrifice, he never forsaken his people. And through Yahabashah, we have redemption of sins. As long as we believe and have faith and worship and reverence Yahabashah. All right. So it says shall be preaching all the world, all over the world, for a witness unto all nations. So the nations are starting to see this. Why? Because we're still in a time of the Gentiles. The last heathen nation to rule is the Edomites, and their last empire would be America. All right? You have America, and then you have the Ten Toes, which is the EU nations. That's their last empire. Once America goes down, but by thermonuclear destruction and once Yahabashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, wins that war in heaven, that's it for the heathen nations. That's going to be the end for the time of the Gentiles ruling. They'll never rule again. They will forever be slaves and servants under the nation of Israel. And you can read about that in Isaiah the 60th chapter, as well as Isaiah the 14th chapter, first three verses. All right. So this is it. The Edomites is the last heathen nation to rule. And it was prophesied when you read Second Ezra 6 and 9, as you see it right there, that the Edomites will be ruling when Yahabashai returns back. Because Yahabashai, he's that great millstone that's going to destroy that statue. All right. So now let's let's keep going. Right. So it says a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So this gospel is in the process of being spread through the four corners of the earth, ultimately through the Internet, ultimately on the street ministries. You know, brothers pushing out videos, pushing out um, live streams. So the gospel is spreading through the four corners of the earth. So now the Gentiles, the heathen Gentiles, they are realizing, oh, shit, we're not the chosen people. We're actually heathen. We, we had it wrong all this time. Right. Let's read this. Second Ezra six and twenty eight. It says, as for faith and what's faith, faith is the evidence of things not seen, the things hoped for. But ultimately, faith is confidence and a guide. And who is our God? Yahweh and Yahweh, which they're two separate entities. All right. 
As for faith, it shall flourish. So this faith, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which is the Holy Spirit in the form of doctrine and the gospel we spread, it's flourishing. All right. And Israelites, that's a part of the elect. They're waking up. It says corruption shall be overcome. Right. What's the corruption? These false philosophies, a.k.a. the way the heathen, these false doctrines, Roman Catholicism. All these man-made religions, the different Christian denominations, Islam, because even Islam comes from the Roman Catholic Church, right? All of those things are corruption, committing fornication, which is the breaking of the law, statutes, and commandments, right? Committing idolatry. So now people that's a part of the elect, they're coming out of that Gentile state of mind, right? Because before we came into the truth, we was corrupted, Right? We didn't know who we were. We didn't know the truth. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. So the truth is being declared all over the Internet, all over the world. This is the biggest trending topic in the world. Who are the real J.E.W.S.'s? Who, who are the 12 tribes of Israel? And it's not these people. These people don't even believe in the New Testament, they think worshiping the Messiah, according to Judaism, is idolatry, which is not. Because the Most High told the Israelites, when you read Matthew, the 17th chapter, concerning the transfiguration, to reverence and worship his only begotten son, Yahabashai. All right. Yahabashai is our savior. He's our mediator and he's our high priest. And through his blood and sacrifice, we have grace, mercy, the gift of faith, and the Holy Spirit to be able to do these videos, do these live streams, have a street ministry, to even be alive. That's through Yahabashah's blood and sacrifice. All right? So these people, they go against end time prophecy. They don't match up with Deuteronomy chapter 28 and the secular history that's in Deuteronomy 28. They don't link up with that. Genesis, the 49th chapter. Concerning where the Israelites will be at in the last days. They don't match up with the biblical prophecies. Ezekiel 37 that I'm going to end up reading about the great awakening. The scriptures say that there was a great falling away first. And that the Israelites would discontinue from their heritage before there's a great awakening. So these people, they don't match up at all with the end time prophecies or prophecies in general concerning being the Israelites. All right. The scriptures say what? When the real J.E.W.s is in their land, it wouldn't be war no more. Nations wouldn't be war with each other. You know, all of their uh, weaponry and missiles and, and war weaponry, it would be turned into farming instruments. All right. When you read Isaiah, the second chapter. So there's a lot of different points I can hit at to prove that these people are not a light unto the Gentiles. They're actually heathen and they're actually Edomites. All right. Not everybody on the outward appearance that looks like a heathen actually is a heathen because only the elect of the nation of Israel will learn and accept the correct doctrine and gospel, convert and be healed, meaning have faith and believe on Yahabashah by hearing a preacher, which is a prophet, spread this gospel spread this word so when they hear they start to have faith like how it tells you in romans 10 all right so you have israelites that look like heathen but their lineage their seed line goes back to abraham isaac and jacob no heathen gentile can receive salvation no heathen gentile is a part of the old or the new covenant and the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh it only pertains to the seed of the promise, which is who? The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right? It only pertains to us, beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel. So understand that. So that guy in the beginning of the video, he possibly could be an Israelite because most so-called white people that actually are Edomites, they would have a problem with you saying that you know, um, the Lord is a so-called black man. All right. So I, I, I doubt it. You know, he could be an Israelite. He could not. Hey, that, that's up. That's up to the Lord. All right. 
So the truth is being declared all over the internet, all around the world. This is Isaiah 25 and 7. It says that he will destroy in this mountain, right? Now, the word mountain, it could metaphorically be referring to a government a lot of the times in the scriptures, right? So who's ruling in this mountain of America, which is Babylon the Great? The Edomites, the so-called white man and his sea line, all right? And when you read Psalms, the 83rd chapter, from verse 1 on down, all these heathen nations came together with one consent to take the name of Israel out of remembrance. To pretty much, through their school systems, that you cannot talk about the Bible. You can't talk about who the real J-E-W-S's are, who the real Israelites are as a whole. Because if you do that, now it's labeled as anti-Semitism, all right, for trying to spread the truth. Isaiah 25 and 7, and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all nations. I mean, over all people. All right. Because the biblical names, right, the 18 nations, they're not being called what they was being called in the ancient world. Now there's over 190 plus countries, which is confusion, because according to the scriptures, after the flood, there was only 18 nations established. And the chosen nation is the seed of the promise, the nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native American Indians, the rest of the heathen nations. They're, they can't receive salvation. The blood of the Lord doesn't pertain to them. The blood of, the blood of Yehoshua was for who? The ones that broke the law, statutes, and commandments. And the Heavenly Father, when you read the Old Testament, he stopped accepting the sacrifices of the nation of Israel. He didn't delight in it. And so the sacrifice that he did delight in after the order of Melchizedek is who? Yahabashah's blood and sacrifice. That's the only sacrifice that he accepted, which is why in Matthew, the 17th chapter, he said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him, meaning to worship him. Because the whole purpose of us breaking the law anyway is so that what? The heavenly father through his son could be exalted, pursuant to um, of, um, Philippians 2 and 9. All right? Yahabashah is the most exalted son of the heavenly father he's the only begotten meaning the only spirit created directly from the heavenly father himself everybody else even including myself we was all created by yahweh all right so the lord is destroying all these lies everybody on the planet earth comes from one of the 18 nations and if you're not an israelite when the lord comes back you're going into slavery period it says and he will destroy and dismount the face of the covering cast over all people, right? Because these nations today, they're not being called by their biblical names. They're being called something else. So some type of modern name. It says, in the veil that is spread over all nations, right? People's identity, people's true lineage, the truth according to the Bible. Now through the prophets, we're laying down and destroying false doctrine and these lies that's been going on for ages, right? This is Baruch chapter 2 and verse 32 concerning the real Israelites. It says, And they, the children of Israel, shall praise me in the land of their captivity. Now, how do you praise the Lord? It says, And think upon my name. So this is a prophecy that's going on right now. This doesn't apply to these people. These people that I'm getting ready to put on the screen, these people right here, they don't even call upon the true name of Yahweh and Yahabashai. Because the scriptures tell you that the name of the Lord is dreadful among the heathen, which is why they use the word Hashem, which means the name. If they was the real chosen people, why they don't glorify Yahweh and Yahabashai? All right. You step into their businesses, you know, you see their um, teachings according to so-called Judaism which any religion, anybody could convert to that, all right? That's, that's not even um, biblical. But the point that I'm getting at is these people don't glorify or come in the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, all right? Let's go back. So the only people that's doing that is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Why? Because we are the real Israelites. It's in us to glorify Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, all right? 
So we're in the land of our captivity, the land of our slavery. We fit the curses of being scattered, right? And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, right? On the internet, you bump into all the Israelite videos, all the different Hebrew Israelite street ministries that's out there. But the ones that's teaching the correct doctrine and gospel, like here at Great Millstone, how we teach through the Holy Spirit, all right? And think upon my name. The name of the Heavenly Father is only one. It don't matter what you translate it in for another language. That's still not his name. His one and only true name could be found only in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. All right? This alphabet right here. As well as his only begotten son, the Messiah. Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. Those characters can only be found in the Lashuan Kordash alphabet. All right? See, this modern Hebrew, it ain't ancient Hebrew. So you can't call upon the name of the Lord with modern Hebrew or any other language. So now let's go here. So there's a great awakening that's going on. We're thinking upon the name of the Lord. Anytime you read the scriptures of the Israelites thinking upon the, the name of the Lord being in captivity, the Lord had mercy upon them. Right. So the same thing is getting ready to happen. So let's, let's get this now. This is Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse, I'm going to start at 21. The point is in 23. It says, and I will set my glory among the heathen, right? Who's the Lord's glory? His people. It says, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid upon them. Yeah, all the heathen nations they seen all the different slave trades, all right? Transatlantic slave trade, Indian Ocean slave trade, Dutch, French, and British slave trade. All these different slave trades from the Western, um, being traded to the Western part of the world and over to the Eastern part of the world, all right? The whole world knows about the history of the Israelites. The whole world knows who the Israelites are. And they, they see how the Lord punished us for our disobedience. For breaking the old covenant, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, which is why we needed the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh in the first place. All right. So the whole world seen that. The whole world sees our living conditions, pursuant to Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight. When you read Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, for verses fifteen to sixty-eight, right, right here, does that apply to these people? Hell no, it don't. They own the diamond district. They own the, 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 um, the banking system worldwide. Any country you go to, it don't matter who faces on it, they control the country's money supply because they run the central banking system. All right? So how the hell do they fit the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28? Which when you read Deuteronomy 28, that's how you will be able to identify who the real Israelites are, the 12 tribes of Israel. They will be oppressed in the land of their captivity. All right. There will be a great awakening that's going on. You don't see that among these people. These people are pretty much Old Testament base. So now let's go back. Um, 22. It says, so the house of Israel, all 12 tribes, right? The so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. We are the Israelites shall know that I am Yahweh, their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel, all 12 tribes, from the Negroes to the so-called Hispanics to the different Indian tribes, right? And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity, a.k.a. went into slavery, got raped, robbed, and murdered, right? Got scattered through the four corners of the earth, had the most atrocities happen to them worse than any other nation on the planet Earth, period. What we went through, you can't compare it. Nobody can compare their history of genocide with ours. It says, went into captivity for their iniquity, all right, for breaking the old covenant. And anytime you broke the old covenant, you needed an animal sacrifice, right? So Yahweh Shai, he's better than animal sacrifice. And he's the only sacrifice that the Most High would accept for the nation of Israel. To put Israel back in good graces, beginning with the elect, through his blood and sacrifice, right? Because they, the nation of Israel, trespass against me. 
The Lord ain't even worrying about you heathen nations. I'm, I'm reading about the Israelites right now. The heathen ain't mentioned here. You know why? Because they wasn't given the law, statutes, or commandments. So how the hell would the blood and sacrifice of Yahabashai pertain to them if they wasn't given the law? If the heavenly father never made the old or new covenants with them? Ask yourself that question. It says, because they trespass against me, therefore hid I my face from them. So the Lord allowed the heathen to do what they did to us, right? As a punishment. We was disobedient children. So your, your children is disobedient. They got to get spanked, right? That's what happened. It says, therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. The 17 heathen nations, so fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness, right? Committing idolatry, committing fornication, worshiping like the heathen, keeping the customs of the heathen, believing in on the philosophies and the way of the heathen, right? According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, have I done unto them and hidden my face from them. But ultimately, when you read that new covenant through the blood and sacrifice of Yahabashai, every single Israelite, first beginning with the elect, that's going to receive salvation, every single Israelite, Pursuing the Hebrews, the eighth chapter is going to be forgiven. All right. But it begins with the elect that have that first dominion and that first resurrection. So this is the NLT. This is um, Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse. Let me see. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse. Uh, I start at 22. It says, therefore, give the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. I am bringing you back, but not because you deserve it. I am doing it to protect my holy name on which you brought shame while you were scattered amongst the nations. We the only people that fit the scattering of the Jews. All right. Which is why I have this here. Even Wikipedia concerning concerning the African diaspora. Right. When you go down here, what does it say of the 21st century? The term diaspora originates from the Greek, right? Diaspora meaning scattering, right? So that links back up with Deuteronomy 2864. Did that happen to these people right here? These people right here, did that happen to them? No. What point in history were these people scattered? Come on. And then when you read in the scriptures, the Messiah is going to bring us back to our land. Not, not through no Belfort Declaration. Like how it tells you in Ezekiel 36 and 5. Come on, man. These people don't link up with who the Israelites are. They don't link up with none of the end time prophecies. So it says, which gained popularity in English in reference to the Jewish diaspora. Come on, man. We, we are the real Israelites. We are the real J-E-W-S's. All right. Now, jumping back. Ezekiel 36 and 23 and L-T. It says, yep, I will show I will show how holy my great name is, the name on which you brought shame among the nations. We did that when we profaned the Most High's name by committing idolatry and fornication. It says, and when I reveal my holiness through you before their very eyes, this is what's going on now. But ultimately, when we get those new bodies, right? says the sovereign lord then the nations will know that i am the lord for i will gather you up from all the nations and bring you home again to your land so wait a minute the lord is going to bring us to our land not not through no belfort declaration all right so no matter which way you put it these people don't link up at all with the prophecies of the israelites all right these people are heathen right here let me go back now KJV, Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel 37 and verse 5, concerning the great awakening, right? It says, thus saith the Lord power unto these bones. We know the bones is the whole house of Israel. The scriptures prophesied that there would be a great falling away first and that we would discontinue from our heritage. But in the land of our captivities, there would be a great awakening. That's end time prophecy, right? Concerning the 12 tribes chart, it says... Thus saith the Lord power unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath, which the breath is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding 
of these scriptures to be able to break it down without any private interpretations, right? Will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. So we're living. We're able to prophesy because this truth is living water. Now we understand why our people is in this condition, right? We got the precepts and the scriptures to back it up. It says, and I will lay sinews upon you and will bring you up flesh upon you, a.k.a. Our identity, the understanding, and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and ye shall live. So now, the elect of the nation of Israel, we're living, right? And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Whenever the word Lord is in caps, it's talk about the heavenly father, Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So you have Israelites that wake up to the truth, knowing that they're Israelites, but then you have different belief systems. You have differences in doctrine. Doctrine and the gospel that you spread is very important. And you're going to learn the correct doctrine and gospel on earth from the men of Great Millstone, all right, GMS. Through the spirit and power, blood and sacrifice of Yahabashai. We have the truth. All right. Continuing on. So it says, but there was no breath in them. So just because you know you're an Israelite, that don't mean that you have the truth. Just because you know that you're an Israelite and you may have like the ancient world apparel on, big beard. That don't mean that you're teaching the correct doctrine and gospel. You have different type of Hebrew Israelite camps out here. You got organizations that's under the 501c3 charter. You got spies, you got agents, you got false prophets. You got men that's wolves in sheep's clothing. All right? So here at Great Millstone, if you subscribe to Brother's channels, you'll be able to see, oh, okay, I'm learning from Great Millstone. Oh, okay, they, they put the scopeo, meaning they're marking men in their videos that teach false doctrine because we give you the warning. Because if we don't give you the warning and warn you of these false prophets, right, that's set up to deceive, then the blood will be on our hands, right, pursuant to Ezekiel 3. So it says, continuing on, then say he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord power, come from the four winds, north, south, east, and west, Israelites that scattered, O breath, and breathe upon these slain. We was in a dead state. We discontinued from our heritage, right? It says that they may live. So that's what you're seeing. You're seeing us in a, a live state. It says, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army, which is who? The elect of the nation of Israel. It says, then... He said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, all 12 tribes. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord power. Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, right? Out of that dead state. It says, And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. This is what he's going to do when Yahabashah returns back. It says, Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, save the Lord. It says, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. So Ezekiel chapter 37 verses um, 16 and 17, as I just read, that's talking about the 12 tribes chart. All right. If you could receive it through faith, this is a thing of faith. All right. 
The scriptures say that the elect of the nation of Israel, they will have faith. So this 12 tribe chart is very biblical. All right. That's the prophecy in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. How come these so-called J-E-W-S's, right? These people right here, why they don't got a 12 tribes chart? Who's the 12 tribes, according to these people? All right? So now let's go back. So this is Romans chapter 9 and verse... I start at um, 3. It says, For I could wish that myself... This is Apostle Paul speaking to the Israelites at Rome. But this refers to Israelites in general. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, right? So you have to be an Israelite according to the flesh. No heathen could convert and be a part of our covenant. Why? Because they're not a part of the seed of the promise. They are not Israelites by seed line, all right? Heathens cannot receive salvation. It says... Who are Israelites, to whom pertain of the adoption, and what's the adoption? That through the blood and sacrifice of Yahabashai, first beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel, we've been adopted back to the Heavenly Father through Yahabashai's blood. All right? Yahabashai is that mediator. He's that bridge between the Most High and Israel. We've been reconciled back to the Most High through Yahabashai. All right? And the glory, right? All the promises and everything. And the covenants, and the covenants, right? The old and new covenant is only made with the nation of Israel. And the giving of the law, the law, statutes, and commandments was only given unto the nation of Israel, not the heathen. Therefore, Yahabashah's blood doesn't pertain to them. It says, in the service of the Most High, right? Salvation, being able to pray in their names, right? And the promises that went from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. It says, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Hamashiach came? Because he came to redeem them that was under the law. Which is who? The Israelites. It says, who is over all the most high blessed forever. Right? It says, not as though the word, the word of the most high have taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. So not every Israelite is going to wake up to this truth. Not every Israelite is going to be a part of this great, um, great awakening. All right. You always had Israelites that wanted to follow the way of the heathen instead of following Yahweh and Yahabashai and listening to the prophets. So this truth is only about the elect. It says, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called, because the promises went from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. It says, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High. Because you also got to remember, Abraham had eight seeds, all right? But the Most High said, in Isaac shall thy seed be called, not Ishmael or any of the other seeds that come from Abraham. It says, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed, which is who? Who's the children of the promise? The Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of the Most High, the inheritance of the promised land of Israel, right? And rulership in the kingdom of heaven forever. The heathens have no part in the Israelites' inheritance, period. All right? NLT version, this is Isaiah 45 and 17. But the Lord will save the people of Israel with eternal salvation throughout everlasting ages they will never again be humiliated and disgraced and this is going to happen in the kingdom of heaven we'll never go into captivity we will rule forever we will have immortality we will implement the laws statutes and commandments and we will be a light unto the gentiles because under our authority they're going to have to learn the laws statutes and commandments and whatever nation doesn't listen, just read Isaiah 16, 12. All right. I'm going to end it with this. This is Romans 11 and 7. It says, what then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for. So you have Israelites that are searching and looking for the truth. But if Yahabashai is not dealing with them, then they can't receive the truth. They can't understand the truth. It says, but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. 
All right. So this truth is only meant for the elect of the nation of Israel to obtain this truth. And here at Great Millstone, that's what we teach. This truth is only meant for the elect. We're not worried about if you could get the truth or not. We teach you the truth, and it's up to Yahweh through Yahweh Shad if you're going to wake up to the truth and ultimately be saved when Yahweh Shad returns back. All right? So I just want to do that quick video. You know, it's evident who the real Israelites are, and this truth is going to spread through the four corners of the earth, and then Jacob's trouble is going to come into um, fruition. You know, that prophecy is going to take place. And then you're going to have great persecution that's going to take place. All right. So, Lord willing, you know, we ain't doing to the end. Shalom.